So how to start one? That's the essential question we're asking today. Um, and uh, before we can ask how to start up, we have to ask uh, why start up. Um, and there are some benefits of Stata. The first one is that uh, they have made some, they have a, a lot of user-made packages, which is something that uh, you'll also hear uh, touted as one of our main benefits, that there are packages that um, kind of um, uh, make, make so many more uh, things possible because users like you and I can uh, just make a package if they feel like there's something missing. And there's always something missing because there's always something you can do that hasn't been thought of by the developers. I also really like the output of Stata. And this is coming from someone who used SPSS for a few years. In SPSS, you always have to look carefully for what your, for your output in a sea of, of uh, tables. In Stata, it's, uh, they have decided to show you a little bit less and then you can ask for more if you want it. Uh, and the main, but the main thing is that um, it's very easy to use, and it has a, a coding language that's very easy to understand, and that's important because I'm going to show you that coding language today. So we're going to we're going to be doing a lot of coding, which might sound scary, but really isn't. And if you have been using SPSS, you might already be used to it. It's called syntax in SPSS, and it's uh, very helpful for. Um, kind of replicating things you've done earlier and to automate some processes and so on. And it's so much easier to do this in Stata. If we compare it to, there are two other packages or programs that uh, I think is natural to compare it to. The first is SPSS, which many of us, that was the first thing we learned. And I think that's simply because SPSS has been around for almost 50 years now. So they have a long staying power and they have, uh, and for that, that's, Many people learned that, and then when they were going to learn, teach other people, then of course they chose SPSS. So one of the benefits here, as you can see, this is the same commands in two different languages. The one the first is uh, status over here, and then uh, SPSS on the left. I assume you can still see my my screen, right? Yeah. Um, and this is a very simple multiple regression. I'm simply trying to predict the price of something based on three variables. You can see the command in Stata is one line with five words. In SPSS, it is uh, several lines, a lot of words. So this is kind of, the, there's, a, there's a lot of unnecessary stuff in the SPSS uh, commands, which means it's very, I think it's very hard to, to com write commands in SPSS, very easy in Stata. Um, if we compare it to R, which is kind of the other natural thing that you would uh, go on to if you are tired of SPSS, you can say that R is extremely powerful. And if you want to do a lot of very difficult stuff, then I would recommend R. But it takes a long time to really learn. And it is uh, it is hard to use. I have used it for, I think, uh, one and a half year, almost two years now. And I still, there is still so much I can't do in R and so much I have to Google whenever I use it. And there is so many errors that always spring up, even though you thought that you had done everything correctly. So if you're going to use, uh, if you don't want to really dive into it, then you just want to learn how to swim, you don't want to learn how to dive, then I think Stata is better. It's a very good medium ground between programming and ease of use and what you can do with it. Um, and with that said, let's just uh, dive uh, into it. There are three versions of Stata, as far as I know, maybe four. I don't know what the difference is. I know that some of them are meant for bigger um, data sets. I think with big, they mean enormous. Um, and some are meant for multiple cores, which has to do with your computer or something, uh, which is not something that we have to care about. But what I have here, is the license that Antonu has uh, supplied for us. It is the MP version, and it's uh, version 16. Uh, Stata doesn't update quite as frequently as SPSS. And I think maybe I started learning the 14 version. There has been a few changes by now, and the, the biggest change that I can see is that um, um, it's now easier to uh, import SPSS files, which is uh, maybe a good thing, because then it's easier to to go from SPSS to startup. If you think my window looks strange, it's because I have um, 
I've used the dark mode because I think it looks I think it looks much cooler. Um, but if you don't like that, so it's possible to change it. Here in the general preferences, you can change the color scheme from light to dark and so on. But the dark is easier on my eyes, so I'm going to be keeping it unless you feel it's uh, very difficult. Then we'll consider going back. Just let me know. And at any point, you may uh, disrupt me or interrupt me uh, if you have any questions or if something is unclear or, or whatever. And we're going to be starting very basic and then we're gonna go all the way to the end doing the heavy stuff like the structural equation modeling so i'm hoping to cover everything that you might um, be interested in but i won't go too much into the statistics because i assume that you already know that otherwise you wouldn't be needing to learn a statistics program but of course if you have statistics questions we can deal with them as as we get along um so first things uh, we can write stuff down here. And we're going to be writing a lot of stuff. This is the command window. It is possible to use data exactly the same as SPSS, meaning that we click our way through various menus. Um, but that's uh, the boring way, and it's the old-fashioned way. Or actually, it's the modern way, but we're going to do it the very old-fashioned way where everything has to be typed out. And the reason is it's uh, uh, easier in the long run to do that, and much quicker. And we want to save every second that we can save. Uh, a very simple command is uh, this, display. So we type display and then uh, some um, apostrophes and uh, then we mistype something. So let me already show you how we can get back our previous command. If we type page up, then we get the last thing we wrote, usually. And then we can write some text, and it will just display that text right back at us. We can use this also for um, numbers, and then we can even use it as a calculator. So if you type display 2 plus 3, it will show us 5. And we can even combine this. So that it will show us both text and uh, and numbers. So you'll notice that the text has to be um, has to be put between those apostrophes. So it, the starter knows it's text. If it, if there is no apostrophes here, it will think that this is a variable name. So everything that isn't enclosed in those signs will be thought of as variable names or a function or something similar. Um, we can also take a look at our current working directory, print working directory, pwd. And this will tell us where we are currently situated on our computer. So if you type this, you'll get a different address. This is where I am currently. This is my uh, my portion, port, portion of the server at Antenu, my user and my documents. But I don't really want to be here. This is kind of where I'm storing all my files at the moment, but this isn't where I've stored my files because my files are actually here. It's on my OneDrive in the folder called Stata and in the data folder. So I'm going to move here. And the way I do that is I copy the address path. So this, uh, I right click up here, copy address as text. If you're on a Mac, the process is kind of similar. You go to the folder on your on your finder, and you copy the, the address. And then I'm going to say I want to change directory CD. And then again, I enclose it in these apostrophes, and then paste the location of my folder. And then we can check if we manage to change our working directory by again typing print working directory. And we'll see that now I am in the current folder. I'm now at my, my hard disk, my users folder, my folder, and the OneDrive is located here. And this is the folder for this course. And I'm currently in the data folder where all my data is, all this data that we'll be using later. And if I, this is kind of the, the alternative to do this is just go into file, open, and then navigating to where we want to be, which would take me like, I would have to go here and then here and here, clicking a lot, and then I will get here. So you'll see I already saved maybe two seconds by just typing out instead. 
and all every second counts especially when we get when we start to get a little bit faster at this then you'll see that this uh, is very helpful um so if you take a look at this folder and we can even you know, we, we could take a look at it by looking at it in windows we don't even have to do that i can just type did and this will tell me the the contents of the directory so here we see that we have um, we have five data sets, affairs, auto, big five, workout, and workout two. They have the extension DTA, and that's the uh, that's the file extension for data saved in Stata's proprietary format. Uh, for instance, SPSS will save their data as .sub, and I think, what's the other ones? SAS, they save it as .dot or something. This is actually a folder. You can see here it's a directory. It's not a data set. But let's take, uh, let's load one of the, um, the data. We'll load the affairs set. And the way we'll, we load data is simply by saying use affairs, which is the name of it. And then we can add the extension. Then I'm gonna add clear. And the reason for this uh, may become clearer later. By typing this, you will see that we get a list of variables, and that is because we have now uh, loaded our first data set. This is a data set that was created by a guy called FAIR, so it's often known as FAIR's Affairs. It's uh, publicly available online, but I have changed the data a little bit to um, make some examples easier. So this one is slightly different from what you would find online, just as a, as a heads up. And what I want to do here is uh, essentially what I do normally when I am getting a new data set. I want to look at how it looks. What is this data set? So I can tell you already that the, the basis of this data set is uh, a survey that um, FAIR did where he collected a lot of data on people having affairs and uh, also like some demographics variables like uh, their gender, their age, how many years they've been married how many children they have, how religious they are, and so on. Um, and I like what I like to do is just take a look at the data and see how it looks. So I'm going to start with tabulating some data. So we'll tabulate affairs, which is the first variable. And you see, we don't have any labels here. So obviously, whoever made the data set, i.e. me, haven't been good enough at uh, showing exactly what this these variables represent. And hopefully, we can fi figure that out by by just uh, exploring the data. So we see that tab is essentially the same as cross tabs in uh, SPSS. It uh, shows us the frequency of each uh, value on this variable. So affairs can be either 0, 1, 2, 3, 7, or 12. And we see here the frequency of them. So 451 people had no affairs. And then um, the rest here, that's the amount of affairs people had. But we, we see already something strange, which, which is that you can either have one, two, three, or seven or 12 affairs. There's nothing in between. So I'm assuming that the coding scheme is a bit strange here. You either had one, two, you had up to seven, or you had 12 or more or something. Or maybe you had more than seven, between seven and 12. That's probably this number here, assumedly. Because before I looked at this variable, I assumed that it was just a number from zero to whatever is the max, and that's the amount of affairs you had. But now I see that it's, it's slightly different. So let's take a look at some more variables, gender, tab, gender. We see here that gender is operationalized as uh, only as a, a dichotomous variable. So you can either be male or female. There's no alternatives here. There are slightly more female than male people who took part in the survey. Um, and we can also take a look at children. And here we see that this is just a yes, no question. So either you had children or you had, you didn't have children. There's no number of children isn't, isn't part of this. These have all been categorical variables, but if I know that something is uh, uh, continuous, then I can use a different uh, command. I can use summarize. So let's summarize age, which is, which is usually Continuous and years married, religiousness, education, and rating. Now we get a nice uh, table showing us the number of observations. 
the mean of each variable, the standard deviation, and the minimum and maximum value. So this also is very helpful to take a look at. We see that the, uh, the mean age is 32 years old. The, most people have been married around eight years, or that's the mean. On a religious scale, going from one to five, the mean is three, so I guess slightly above medium. Education, and we don't really know, uh, but it goes from nine to 20, so I'm assuming it's years, uh, where nine is the least amount of education you can have, and the, the mean is 16. And rating, I don't know what this variable is, so but at least I know it goes from one to five. Uh, let's take a look at the last variable that is occupation. And I'm tabulating it, and we see that it goes from one to seven. And this is probably uh, some sort of uh, categorization of, uh, of uh, occupations, but I have no idea what they mean. They are unhelpful to me because I didn't get that information in the data set. <clears throat> so I have no idea how to use this. I don't know what the group one is or two or so on. So I'm actually just gonna drop this because I don't, I can't use it. So I'm gonna drop occupation. And you will, if you take a look at the variable window here, when I press enter, you will see it disappeared. So I have just dropped this variable from the data set. And I can do this if I, for some reason, don't want the variables or if I don't want specific uh, observations. And we'll see some examples later. So the drop will be helpful later on. Uh, there was another thing. Uh, I wonder if anyone saw something strange in uh, this table. Anyone saw it, saw anything strange there? Nothing. How about if we take a look at age, and we see that there are almost 600 participants. Mean is 32. Standard deviation is 10. Minimum is 17.5, and the maximum is 157. Do you see anything strange now? Yeah, you see that the maximum here is uh, impossible because the oldest person ever to live, I think, I keep forgetting, but I think it was 114 or something. This is at least impossible. So something went wrong here. Uh, someone, either they meant to write 17 or 15.7 or or they, something, we don't know what happened, but something went wrong there. Um, so what we can do is we can take a look at, uh, we can use something called if and if clause. And the if clauses, they are very, very helpful. You may have been using them a bit if you've been using uh, SPSS or anything else before. It's kind of this very central thing to data management that um, maybe in the beginning you don't understand it completely, but it's so helpful when you start to really understand how to use them. So I'm going to do a summarize of age, but only if age is um, let's say less than 120. So what this does is that you can see we now have 597 participants, i.e. one less. So I have now uh, done the same summarize, but without the one person that was too old. And we now actually see that the uh, the oldest person now is 57. So there's a quite there's a hundred years between between here. We see that these values change slightly. The mean is more or less the same, but the standard deviation goes down significantly from 10.5 to 9.24. So this is uh, this shows us that um, our statistics will probably change if we keep this uh, anomaly in here. And uh, what we should do then, of course, is to ch either change it or drop it. If I knew what uh, I should change it to, I might do that, but I'm gonna just do it very uh, simply by dropping them. Because I don't, I don't know what I would change it to. I don't know what's a, a valid uh, value for them. So I'm gonna drop this person. And the way I can do that is I will drop if age is bigger than 120. That will get, catch this person. And I guess I could also just say bigger than 58. But just to be 100% sure, I'll say this. So I know that I will drop that one person. Uh, but now we saw something strange happen here. And we see that four observations were deleted, which uh, shouldn't be the case. Because we saw here that only one person 
is older than 57. So it's that one person you want to delete. If I delete everyone who has age above 120, then we shouldn't have four people deleted, only one should be deleted. And this is um, what happened here is uh, one of those kind of mind blowing things that will always happen when you do anything in the statistics program is that something unexpected happened when you thought you were doing something very simple and then you get a strange result. And what happened here is uh, one of those wonderful paradoxes of uh, programming, which is that nothing is bigger than something. And what happened here, and we can, I'm gonna just uh, take back the original data set. So I'm gonna reload it, use affairs clear. So we get it back and let's summarize um, age. So we have 598. And then let's see if I can remember this command. It is, I think it is summarize detail. Yeah. And then I believe, oh, of course we need to have summarize age detail. That actually doesn't give us what I wanted. Here, okay, and this is a, I had to go a, a different way, but so let me show you here that what I did was I tabulated age instead of um, instead of using summarize, uh, and then I added what's called an option. So I wrote comma and then M, and M stands for missing. And this shows us the all the different uh, values you can have again. So you will see that it wasn't as continuous as I assumed because you can only be 17.5, 22, 27, 32, 37, and so on. So there's a five year interval here where you can uh, say your age. And then one person is accidentally 157 years old. I assume they were supposed to be this age. And then we have this dot here, which represents those who have missing. And that's three people have missing. So you'll see that what happened when we dropped everyone with an age above 120 is that we dropped the one guy with an old age, but also those three that are missing. And that is because uh, a missing value is ironically a very high value. It's counted as, because it has to be countable for some reason, which has to do with programming. So you can either say that missing is high or low. And in Stata, missing is uh, very high. So it's, I don't know if it's infinity or bigger than infinity or something, but that means that if we make a command that drops everyone above a certain uh, limit, it will also drop everyone that's missing. And I don't, let's say I don't want it. I want to keep this missing in here for some reason, but I want to drop this one specific guy. So we have to adapt our code a little bit. So we're going to drop again, age drop if age is bigger than 120, but also, and we'll just, we'll do this uh, parenthesis to uh, differentiate. There's two clauses. You'll drop if the age is bigger than 120 uh, and age is not equal to missing. So we can we can look at this for a little while. And also I will make all the, the commands I've used. They will be available after the seminar uh, with some comments so that you will be able to replicate everything we did here. Uh, what, what this command says is that you're gonna drop all participants, if they have an age above 120, and if they have an age uh, that's uh, not uh, missing. So they need to satisfy both those criteria. It's not or, it's and. You have to be both old and you have to not have missing. If we run this, we will see that we now have correctly only one observation deleted, which is what we wanted. And we can double check it by running this again. And we see that we have no one above 57, but we still have those three that are missing. Um, we can also start, what do you often do when you, when you um, manipulate data? And you know, that's not something you often do when you have a new data set is that you need to kind of massage it a bit to get what's, uh, to get the, the variables you need to be able to an analyze them. 
And there is a lot of stuff to do. So I can't, of course, show you everything, but I can show you the general uh, process we go by when we want to do something. And one of them is to use this uh, drop to drop what we don't want and uh, use those if clauses to do various things. But when we want to, when we want to generate a variable or to create a new variable, then we use the very simple command gen, which is short for generate. And um, let's say that you'll see here, we don't have any ID variables, which can be very helpful because they allow us to, to know that one person has this ID. So let's say that we want to make an ID variable. And there's a very easy way to do that. We're gonna give it a name. So for instance, we can call it ID or we can call it identification or whatever you want. You can give it a meaningless name, but it's always best to give it a name you know what it means. So we say the variable ID is equal to, and then I use uh, this command here, underscore N. If we run this, we see now we have a new variable down here called ID. And to really show what that variable looks like, I'm gonna use a command called browse. Browse is essentially the same as uh, data view, data view button in SPSS. It allows you to see all the individual data points. And we can see here that uh, this is this is again all the variables we have and all the individual people. And as you can see, this is the number they have. And this is the ID variable we just created. So you'll see that they create a variable and gives each person an unique number from one and all the way down to, to the bottom, which is uh, 600. And this is, of course, you can see that we already have, they already have an index here, but it's uh, sometimes easier to have a the index as a variable to make it easier to work with. And that's why I created a specific variable for it. Uh, generally, we don't really, I mean, if you, if you are used to SPSS, you'll probably have spent a lot of time in the data view window, but we don't really want to be there because uh, we don't want to change individual values because it's inefficient. We want to instead find uh, ways to code those changes. And even you'll notice I can't actually change anything here. I'm pressing the buttons and nothing happens. So I can't, I'm not allowed to change anything even with this command. If you really have to, and I hope you never have to, but if you do have to go in and change individual values like that, you can use the edit uh, function to be able to change this. And then you see, I, uh, now I can change whatever I want here. Change all the ages to one. But generally it's much easier or better if we can find some commands to do it instead of manually having to, to go in and change it. it will, if we can do it uh, via commands, then we'll save a lot of time. And also it will be easier to kind of check it again later. And also it's less likely you'll make a mistake. Um, let us uh, reload affairs. So I don't I get back all those I changed. You can see that that's true. We now, there's no zero or ones here. So we have uh, removed the changes I did. And I'm gonna do something that I don't like to do normally, but it's very common, which is to make a dichotomized variable. And this is what you do when you have a continuous variable and you want to make it into a either or variable. So for instance, here, you remember that the affairs uh, data looks like this. You can have uh, either one, two, three, seven or 12 affairs. But let's say that we're only interested in those who had affairs versus those who didn't have affairs. So I'm gonna create a new variable that I can then use to, for instance, do some logistical regressions. So again, we generate a new variable. I'm gonna call it had affair to remember that this is the, what the variable is. And then I'm gonna actually just say that this variable is missing or all the values here are missing. So you'll see we generated 601 missing values. This is a completely empty variable. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna replace those missing values with something. So I will replace 
the values of had a fair, and they will be zero if the value of affairs, which is the first uh, this variable here, if affairs is equal to zero. And notice that I used those double equal signs. This is, uh, and you'll see there's a difference here between simple and double equal signs. This equal sign here means to assign a value of something to something. So I'm assigning the value of zero to hand affairs if I, and this is a comparison, if the value of affairs is equal to zero. This is a comparison, this is an assignment. This is, you'll get, get this eventually if it's a, a strange uh, distinction right now. And you'll definitely see it when you forget it and get an error message. We run this and we see that we made 451 real changes, which corresponds to this number, right? Because that's the number of people who had zero on their affairs. And let's complete this variable by replacing the value of had affair. We're gonna say that value is one if affairs is bigger than zero. And if you remember from earlier, I believe that this will actually give us some, I believe this will give us some missing uh, values because we haven't removed that one person. We haven't removed that, that one person who has, um, who's too old and we have four people with missing values that I haven't removed this time. But uh, that's fine. So ideally you will want to remove those as well, but I'm not gonna bother with that now because this is after all, they, those with missing values on affairs, they will, if there are any, they will also be encompassed by this if else sentence. But let's not care too much about that right now. Let's take a look at the variable we made, had affair. You see it is a variable containing only two variables, either zero or one or two values. And 451 have had an affair or have, have not had an affair and 150 had an affair. So this is an easy way to make a new variable depending on certain circumstances. Um, are there any questions so far? No, then we will just uh, keep chugging along. And we're now gonna use a different data. Uh, we're now gonna, we're still gonna be in the same, let's see, no, we're gonna move actually. We're gonna go into this subfolder called big five. So I'm just gonna change directory into here. And what do we have here? We have actually two, only two files. The first is a text file. The other one is what's called a CSV file. Um, and if you're not familiar with CSV files, it is essentially the, the basic way to save data. It's uh, the CSV stands for comma separated values. And it's essentially just a text file with all the values of your data set separated by some symbol, which is usually common. They can also be semicolon or tab or dots or whatever. And this text file here is helpful. This uh, gives us some information about the data set. And I, um, I think I should have given a link here, but this is from a, uh, a uh, website, which I believe is the personality project. Can't quite remember. I should uh, figure it out. And uh, they have collected a lot of um, data on personality, and I'm, I'm sure the link is somewhere in this uh, codebook text file. And they have given this information about what we're looking at. So essentially, this is uh, a lot of personality items from personality questionnaires. Uh, they're all rated on a five-point scale, where one is disagree, and then five is agree. And note here that zero is missed. That's something that will be important later. And uh, they're named so that uh, E stands for extraversion, N stands for neuroticism, A is agreeableness and so on. And there are 10 items for each personality scale. 
And there's some more information down here. And they have some background variables, race, age, and so on. Um, so we know that. And then we want to import this. So this note here that the data is not already saved in the starter format. So we have to make sure that we get it in the right way. And that will be very helpful for us to illustrate how to import data. And you'll often get this. You'll often have to import data either as a, uh, from an SPSS file or from a CSV file or whatever. And I found that if you have a, an obscure data program where your data is stored and you need to get it into something else, and there isn't any way to uh, go from that program into uh, your program. For instance, in the previous versions of Stata, you, there was no way to import data, uh, SPSS files into Stata. They've changed that now. But back then there wasn't any natural way to do it. So what's often helpful is to uh, export your data first into a CSV file and then later import it as a CSV file. So you can use this as a go-between. <clears throat> 